What's up, guys? We got Infinity Watch, how to build. We got the tier fours, we got the, the ISOs, we got everything. It's actually real easy, but uh, we're going to go over it anyway for the people who don't get uh, Adam Warlock on this pass and are going to get him in the next or for future viewers. So, uh, basically, the Infinity Watch is the new Black Order, technically, uh, where together they're stronger than apart in some manners now through some gameplay we figured out that if you don't have adam warlock kestrel makes a completely acceptable fourth uh, you can even maybe replace moon dragon with surfer either way the core of this team and how you're going to build them and what's relevant on them uh stays the same the major difference is what benefits them as a team and what benefits them as individual characters as you know, I do these to talk about what benefits the team itself. So let's look at the team and determine how to make the team the best they can with as little value. We're going to start with Moon Dragon. So uh, just a disclaimer, all the passives on this team help the team more than anything else. Uh, everything else goes a little bit more individualized. So starting with Moon Dragon, we are going to look at her ISO. Her ISO, obviously, she's kind of a healer, so healer ISO seems fine. But because the team works so well with synergies uh, uh, based on assists, giving her striker is a huge amount of damage through, but we call it the triple tap when Nebula's present on the team. So uh, if you are trying to just complete the team, putting striker on everybody, but Nebula is a great way to play through. Um, if you want to get a little bit more modular, you can use something like Healer, especially on a character like Moon Dragon. She doesn't actually do much damage to begin with, so that triple tap isn't going to be as meaningful as maybe uh, throwing Healer on her to make sure she outputs a little bit more. She doesn't have a great uh, health pool to begin with, so Healer isn't absolutely phenomenal on her, but it's not the worst. You can also go ahead and put you know, Raider on her if you need to, uh, if you're using her for domains, but we don't have to talk about that. So we're starting with the Tier 4s. We're going to go at least from the bottom. 20% um, extra focus for self and 20% extra resistance uh, for her team, both uh, with the tier 4. This is kind of a slam dunk, giving that team the, the extra focus and resistance buff is really going to make a difference, not from the getting your buffs removed, we already know how that works out, but uh, from the making sure you don't get debuffs placed on you when that one opportunity where they can... Uh, it's, it's a good upgrade uh, for the mirror match. You're going to notice that in the mirror match, uh, the tiny little things are what's going to make the difference, but this is one of those things. Uh, outside of that, there's nothing huge in this that you get from putting tier fours in, but I think that that extra 20% focus is meaningful enough for the whatever 200 uh, tier fours it costs to do. Uh, telepathic Burst. Uh, it increases the flat amount of healing by 15, going to a flat 30%. Uh, since her health pool isn't great, this is a huge uh, increase. Going from 15 to 30% is basically double. Uh, and then apply defense down for two turns to all enemies. That happens no matter what. The extra 60% damage to all enemies, that's on you. Uh, I don't think that if it was like triple digit increase in damage we'd see a real number this just brings it up to a nice solid 400 she doesn't do much damage to begin with so especially for the fights you're going to be using them for so if you feel like you need the healing if you're using them in raids or uh, maybe on war defense that healing can be a difference maker this is a little bit better off of her team than on her team so just keep that in mind if you're using her for like doom skill raids but on her team, you really don't need it. The team has enough sustain, so this is a skippable one. Meditation Wave, yes, because of the reduced speed bar primary target by 20%, or an additional 20%, that'll bring it to a 50%, roughly the same as your uh, Miles Special or your, uh, I guess, Okoye Ultimate. You know, the, the abilities you don't really worry about anymore. Um, the extra damage, again, not incredibly relevant, but that slight increase that to 50% reduction speed bar can be enough uh, for her team of course uh, also remember reduction of speed bar cannot be resisted so it just happens so that it's a big enough deal for her I would I wouldn't have a problem investing in this one especially for using that entire team for things like war really lets you control the fight a little bit better but it is of course only 
primary. And everything else it does, it does without tier 4, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, then we have Psionic Assault. Uh, just damage. So you can... Disclaimer, tier 4-ing all of their passives is a good idea because you're going to get a lot of assists. So it just increases the total amount of damage throughput you're doing. I think it's a reasonable tier 4. Uh, on her team, outside of her team, I think it's fundamentally useless. And even then, I think it's the worst basic of all of them. So if you have to save some tier 4s, this would be the one I'd save it on. Uh, now we're going to move to Nebula. Uh, originally, I had thought Nebula was uh, kind of like a gimmicky character because of how she works. Turns out she's pretty much an anchor on the team, maybe better than Moondragon, and probably a little bit better than Adam Warlock as far as helping the team win. Uh, not as good as helping the team survive, but she survives herself and she reses herself, so let's start taking a look at exploit weakness. Oh, and uh, one last thing. She's the only skirmisher because she assists with exploit weakness at 5. That's it. Just throwing that out there. Uh, so exploit weakness on spawn, gain speed up. If health is full, at start of match, revive once with some number of health, not a big deal. Uh, this is where you pay for it. This is the Sabertooth Tier 4. On turn, gain 20% uh, assist chance and 20% per Infinity Watch ally. That goes up from 10, as you can see behind me. So a 10% plus 10% means he has a 50-50 of doing it without the Tier 4. With it, it's a flat 100%. So every time an Infinity Watch character or realistically uh any character uh takes and stats. so if you have an extra character on the team uh or if you have sinister as a fifth and you clone another infinity watch character uh her assist chance goes to 100 so she's always assisting that's why skirmish is so good because whenever she assists somebody she's going to put the tap on her which is going to create the double tap effect from the striker skirmisher interaction you've seen it with ms marvel uh this is uh, hands down for the team the most important tier four uh, period because it doesn't quite double your damage it doubles your attacks but it adds a flat like 30 percent to your damage because of how assists work in the game huge upgrade should do it immediately um everything else on her so this is a wall of text right 80 percent damage to primary target 50 percent to secondaries chain to two additional if this character chain to everybody who cares truly it it, it seems like it's a lot. She doesn't actually do much damage outside of her basic, and she facilitates more damage. Uh, her damage stat isn't great, so this is kind of skippable because the 240 tier 4s aren't going to give you as much as you think. Plus, when you see the chain to all allies, that also makes the assumption that you're going to target the correct target, you know, one of the ends, and it's going to hit correctly and in like raids and stuff that might not come up now you're probably not using her in raids this is a okay tier four right don't worry too much about it challenging foe uh this is just damage and as we know i don't like just damage things unless you are the primary damage dealer or if damage is your bag baby so i can't really justify any amount of t4s in this your mileage may vary go for it uh and then again same rules apply when you upgrade the tier 4, it goes from 5% of the target's total max health to 10%. That's a big enough percentage because 5% of your health is way more than any actual amount of damage, depending on the target it can increase. The 40% damage increase it gives, eh, this tier 4 is huge. Plus, since he's assisting all the time, making that attack do a little bit more is only going to benefit you in the long run. So... That's it. She's actually incredibly simple, passive, and basic. You're going to find out that passive and basic is probably good on all of them, and then this becomes very situational. Now we'll move to Philovel. I believe Philovel is the best character on this team uh, for a lot of reasons, based on her just ridiculous stat pool, ridiculous damage pool, what she does for the team. And for that, we're going to start with her passive. On spawn, apply defense up to two turns to self and all Infinity Watch allies. Phenomenal. Uh, when this character... Uh, or any Infinity Watch ally which drops below 50% health, apply two death proof to that character. Great. We got a scroll, though. We got time to go. Uh, this is where the Tier 4 comes in. This increases the drain by 25% to 
to herself and all Infinity Watch. This goes from 50 to 25%. That means they're just gaining half the damage they do. On some characters, like Moondragon and Nebula, uh, it's not going to feel that great. But considering the fact that they're all going to be assisting and you know skirmishing and double attacking, this is going to be a lot of sustain. She, on her own, creates such a huge amount of sustain for the team that it, it's pretty insane. Uh, and then, of course, they're going to have death proof more often than not because of how the, the turn meter works for the team. So you should trust their survivability. They gain death proof when they're dying anyway. It's really good design. Uh, the last thing is an extra 10% damage for self. It doesn't seem like much. But 10% damage for an entire team is still through the roof insane. It rewards you for your higher investment, and it also balances out lower investments as you wait. This is probably one of the uh, closest after Nebula's Tier 4 that I would invest in on this team. Uh, it's it's so much for so many players or so many characters on the team, you kind of got to look at it. Everything else on here stays the same. You don't have to worry too much about it. It's that extra 10% damage and that extra... 25% or double uh, the drain that makes a huge deal. Everything else is, again, interesting. Now, this one I like, and I'm surprised I haven't done it yet, so let me solve it right there. Uh, the damage increase goes about 150% up. That's not really a giant deal. The second turn of defense up and offense up is great because of how it works. So on turn one, this is how much energy she'll have. She'll have five of six, so she won't do it. On turn two, that's when all the defense ups will have expired or the safeguards will have expired so they get removed. This extra two turns of defense up, especially when a safeguard is triggered uh, on the following turn with Adam Warlock, is going to keep them alive and not worry about the mirror match Gamora flipping them or anything like that. Uh, so if you have Adam Warlock, this is a no-brainer. If you don't have Adam Warlock, be careful with this because without Safeguard, deposing Gamora's in the mirror match will be able to flip those defense ups, and that's no bueno. Or at least a resist check on him anyway. So just keep that in mind. I think this is a phenomenal one, but again, with Adam Warlock. Uh, Quantum Cutter, just damage, blah. She does good damage, so this don't feel bad about this one, but blah. Uh, and then Meteoric Slash, same rules apply, um, the offense down for two turns to primary target isn't bad. I mean, if you're looking to beat the Black Order, this team does it with, like, very little. If you're looking to actually beat real teams, the offense down for a second turn might make a huge deal. I don't see it. Again, it really just comes down to that assist thing. So all of her Tier 4s are great because she does a great deal of damage. But again... I think if you're trying to save some, you could skip on this in the special and not worry too much. And again, same rules, striker apply because of how the team interacts. Uh, Adam Warlock himself. Adam Warlock is weird because most legendaries are like great on their team, good outside of their team. Adam Warlock is like good on his team and then like, I guess, okay. Now, some people are going to say like, I used Adam Warlock here and you know what? I'm sure somebody used... America Chavez in Dark Dimension 2, like the possibilities are endless with what you can do, but he doesn't have that same feel like a, a Jubilee or Doc Ock did where they just kind of create a situation. Uh, same rules for uh, ISOs, nothing there, but let's look at his kit and see kind of where things go. The biggest thing about Adam Warlock is his brand new ability safeguard. Unfortunately, he only applies it to Infinity Watch allies on spawn and when he uses his ability, so he takes away a great deal of where his value could have been by being forced to be used on the team. Uh, however, Safeguard is absolutely insane, really nerfs the abilities of characters like Silver Surfer or Thanos, uh, absolutely through the roof, phenomenal ability. And the fact that he gives Safeguard an immunity to them together on spawn, huge. Uh, the biggest thing is, if this character is full health, revive once with 60%, blah, 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 blah. We can read these. These don't change. What changes here is right here. When this character drops below 20% health, gain regeneration plus safeguard plus two deflect. In case you didn't know, safeguard prevents abilities from being removed, not from removing themselves, so the deflects will go away. It's not like he has permanent deflects or anything like that, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, that is a tier four upgrade. So, on its own, this is a survivability for him upgrade, really helpful. The second thing that matters is that extra 10% health to the entire team. 
Again, it's only 10%, but when it affects the entire team and when you want to use the entire team together, that 10% health is meaningful, especially when characters are resing themselves, especially when characters are healing themselves through drain. That 10% health can be the difference maker of surviving or not, especially in things like the mirror match. So, uh, also, I believe the armor goes up a little too. Who cares about armor? He's not... It could have been a little bit more, like you see Black Bolt, I think Black Bolt ends up giving a max of like 50% health to everybody. This might have been a little bit underdeveloped for what it is, but any more health is better health when you're having some hard times in content. So I think this is a great tier four. If you had to skip any tier fours on the entire team, you could justify this one or at least wait on this one until you can get more T4s to, to do it. Uh, but it is a very reasonable tier four especially because that survivability boost he gets moving to power overwhelming just damage we're not even going to look at it he's got really good health like really good health right uh his damage is okay like he's not the damage dealer on the team so if you want him to do a little bit more damage you're welcome to it i'm going to skip it for now maybe if i see solo content where he's good in the future that might come up an enfeebling blast uh, this is uh, interesting because it applies Disrupted to all enemy protectors for two turns. Just any enemy protector. Um, clearly, this is supposed to be for very specific fights. Two turns of Disrupted seems like a lot, um, which is why everybody tier forward Miles' ultimate. Uh, except nobody ever did that and like didn't hate it. So, you don't have to worry about this. The second turn of... If you notice that you're not able to put the damage out, this is kind of a stopgap tier 4. Like, the unfortunate thing is you can't undo it. You know, like, basically, you should bring your characters up through gear or other means if you're noticing that you can't kill the problematic characters or the protector itself before the first instance of Disrupted ends. Uh, that said, I can think of a couple situations where characters reflexively taunt, like Strife or Bishop, where that two turns of protection might matter. You're going to have to feel that out. I don't think this tier 4 is through the roof insane. I think it's completely skippable. But 120% damage uh, kind of sweetens the pot a little bit, if you track that. So bringing his attack to 500%, again, doesn't have much damage, but you don't really sleep on a whole 100%. It's not bad, not great, moves away. Uh, same rules apply, basic, do whatever. Um, the uh, two turns of bleed actually end up being a little bit, or two turns of bleed twice ends up being a little bit more damage because once you level seven an ability that puts a bleed stack on, the amount of damage the bleed stack does goes up. I believe it's 135% as opposed to 110, or the exact numbers elude me right now. It's just more bleed damage. Um, Eh, you're really doing the basic again for the same reason you do anyone else's because of the double and triple attacks from Nebula on the team. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you know, it will apply more bleeds. They'll have a whole bunch of bleed stacks. I don't see many situations where this is, uh, oh my god, I won the fight because of it. But it'll help you put a little bit extra damage through, put through. Not the worst tier four. That's pretty much it for Adam Warlock. Again, same thing, Striker. You know how it works. Uh, now we have Gamora. Gamora is the only character who gets Striker regardless. You know, like wherever she goes, you give her Striker. Uh, we don't really want to look at the basics, the abilities of these characters. Just remember every tier four you put into her is counts as two because same thing with Phoenix, you get these and then you get the other side. So Deadly Methods on its own, on Empowered, filled speed bar by 20% or an extra 20%. That means that when she's Empowered... Boop, 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 boop. She she goes, you know what I mean. Um, clear all negative effects from self and move your <laughs> move move forward. The revive is automatic. Everything else is pretty much automatic on her. Uh, but getting that extra fifty percent speed bar is relevant because very rarely does a character ever have zero. Um, and it is fill speed bar by fifty percent, so it's gonna go over if necessary. Big enough deal. The 5% crit chance for self, that was always there, I think. And might as well, right? I guess Raider helps with her, too, if you wanted to use her solo. But Striker works the best because of her damage output. Uh, flying Slash. Slight increase in damage on this attack. But 
honest to God, you're never going to use it. Like, she'll never be unempowered on her team. Um, and Assassin Strike, just chance... Oh, guaranteed bonus attack for a little bit more damage. Same thing with the assists. It helps get that little bit extra damage in early if you end up getting the assist through from, from before her res. Like, if you don't have Adam Warlock and using Kestrel and for some reason she hasn't empowered. But we're not here to see that. We're here to see the empowerment. Deadliest Woman... At tier 4, she gets 5% piercing, piercing for each Infinity Watch ally and 5% crit chance. So, to from 10 to 15% piercing per ally, that's goes from 50% to 75% or 70%. Not the worst, a huge amount of bonus damage throughput from what's going on and then going a little bit more crit chance. That was the same. It doesn't stack with the previous one. She just has a flat 10%. And then, you know, everyone else gets 10%, except non-Guardian or Infinity Watch. They get 5 Actually, not an unreasonable tier 4. Uh, good on both sides of it, so not bad. Requiem, insane amount of damage. This is a tier 4 that you can feel free to invest in because her job is damage dealer. So, make sure she does damage. This attack should obliterate whoever it hits. Very rarely will be ready on turn 1. Unless you build to do it, but by the time it, it hits somebody, it's going to do a lot of damage. Even then, this is not her primary huge source of damage. Uh, Bring to Rune is the AoE, 80%. Uh, it cannot miss, so if she's blinded, blah, blah, blah. Apply heal block for two turns. Then uh, two turns of heal block, to me, I haven't noticed it come up. Uh, generally speaking, I, I, I don't think that the heal block is too relevant. Uh, I think it's kind of like, hey, we're really going to kill the uh, Black Order, you know? But I, I don't think it, it comes up in any meaningful way uh, to need it. But again, she's the damage dealer. This is a pretty big chunk of extra damage. And it's everybody, so that 80% isn't to a single target. It's to all the characters. Same thing as like Symbiote Spider-Man's ultimate. Good investment overall. Uh, brutal Strikes. This is where we get the real thing. This is a 7, 800% damage attack. You know, it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, about just under 800% damage. It's running the numbers. And the bleed stacks, bon guaranteed bonus attack. Like, this is going to out damage her ultimate more often than not, especially if she still has the offense up or has been given it from something else. So, this is where, this is what's going to kill people. And that. Also being her assist, uh, which she triggers just from Nebula on her own and also from, you know, the, the skirmisher tag and whatnot. This is a huge output of damage. So you really got to look at it from that perspective. Make the bleed stacks a little bit better. She is a damage house. You shouldn't regret any tier four as you put in her because of her damage output. Uh, that's pretty much it for the entire team. Hopefully that information was helpful to you. Uh, I got nothing else to say. I try to make these videos short, but it's actually impossible most of the time. So if you have any questions or comments on the Infinity Watch, if you think that there's a slightly better build, or if you think some of these tier fours can be skipped, uh, by all means, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you think some of these tier fours are mandatory and I haven't said them, please remember what the definition of the word mandatory is before you make a comment. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.